Well, welcome back. I am almost to the bakery that I want to go to this morning. Get out of the way here. I got people walking down the street. I would have taken more video of the walk here, but I was too dependent on Google Maps. I didn't want to close it very long. <laughs> I did stop along the way and take a few pictures, but um, I'm in sort of, if I can turn around here so you can see, just came down this little alleyway here. And uh, let me turn my camera around. I am heading down here for my last turn. So it was kind of safe for me to stop uh, watching Google Maps. I am in the Jewish quarter. And there are a lot of ruins here, just like there is everywhere else. You can see some of them through this portico here. We'll walk around a little bit while we're here, but my number one goal is to come down here to this bakery. I have found what I'm looking for. Uh, I might not be able to uh, video much in there because it is so small, but uh, I'm gonna walk in and see if I can find what I'm looking for. Okay, I got what I came for. Let's see if I can pull this down a little bit here so you can kind of see the side a little better. There are cherries on the bottom. It's burnt on the top just a little bit. Um, it's very soft uh, and it is just absolutely excellent. I'm gonna see if I can find a place here somewhere where I can set my camera down and show it to you a little better. All right, so my camera is sitting precariously on top of a garbage can. <laughs> but I want to show you, this is, see how soft and wonderful that is. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now I got here early enough in the morning that um, there was no lineup, there was no crowd lined up. And there is no easy way to eat this, so I'm just going to pick it up. That is simply amazing. Absolutely amazing. And well worth the 30 minute walk it took to get here. And if I do not accomplish anything else on this trip, I will die a very happy man after that piece of cheesecake. It cannot be stated enough how wonderful that is. <laughs> now, the bakery sits right across the street from a school. And as I was getting these shots up here above, I had a school teacher come by and say, please do not video the children. <clears throat> and I explained to him I was an educator as well, and I, I was trying hard not to do that. Right now, there is a coffee bar right across the street, and I'm thinking coffee would be in order. So I decided to hold off on the coffee just a little bit. It's, it's really, really busy down there, a lot of kids, and I'm just gonna try to get out of that and find some coffee a little quieter. I did want to walk down here. I came down here when I was here for the food tour that introduced me to this bakery. And here at the end of the street is a really, really good way to see how the Romans have integrated the ruins into their modern architecture. So let me turn the camera around. Now, some of these buildings have been here hundreds of years. The, uh, the bakery has been here at least a couple hundred years, owned by the same family. You will see these everywhere through Rome, especially the electric models. But then walking over here just a little bit, you can see the ruins over here and over here 
built right into the new apartment buildings that are here. And all of the, I don't know what I just did with my camera there, it didn't throw you off. Um, all of the modern buildings over here as well. And I was just over there on the other side of those columns taking some pictures while we go. I'm gonna take a few pictures here as well. I'm trying to take pictures along the way that I can work into the photography tutorials that I'm doing and uh, both good pictures and bad pictures so I can show the difference between the two. And hopefully when I get back to do that editing, I'll remember which is which. <laughs> Well, we're almost to Piazza Navona, just a couple of minutes away. And I just happened to look over to my right and see this place here that I have seen on Instagram from one of those channels that post the stuff about go here, go there, go here, go there, turn here, whatever. I want to go in here and show you around. This is Piazza Navona. It is less than spectacular at the moment <laughs> because it's three major viewing spots. The three fountains here are all covered up and they're all, you know, being restored. And you can't take pictures and you can't sit on them and you can't, you know, toss coins into them or get slow motion or long exposure photography to get the water slow. You can't do any of that. What they do still have right here behind me is the Basilica of St. Agnes and Ag Agone. Um, and so we're gonna go in there today. But first, I am gonna stop and get a cup of coffee here because it's not quite open yet. Now, in all honesty, I may have just talked myself out of getting coffee here because this is the penultimate tourist spot and as a result, everything is higher priced. And typically that also means it's a little lesser quality because what do the tourists know? So you remember in yesterday's video, I got a cappuccino that was uh, one euro 50. These two places behind me, a cappuccino, eight euros, eight, nope. Nope, 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 and another nope. I will go starving before I will do that. Just a tip for when you come to Rome. Now I just walked through one of the little alleyways to the area behind Piazza Navona. And you can see there's a whole lot more restaurants and things back here as well. A lot of them not open because they don't serve breakfast. But uh, it's always worth exploring. Now, some of you may be wondering, Tim, when you go into these places, the lights are flickering. What, what is wrong? Well not really anything wrong. It's the difference in the electrical current in the United States versus Europe. So in the United States, everything operates on 60 hertz. And I have my camera set to 60 hertz so that it, it compensates for the flicker of the light. The light that we think we see 
is not really a solid light. It's, it's a flickering light. In the UK and in other places in Europe, that is set to 50 hertz. So it's not synced up with the camera. And I could go in and change my settings, I know, but I'm not going to. Now, I'm about to head back into Piazza Navona. I've just walked down this little alleyway, Piazza Navona is over here. But just a reminder that in Rome, when you just go wandering, you're going to see Roman ruins everywhere. Even on a street corner.
Well, you have just seen my absolute favorite basilica, church, cathedral, whatever. Maybe aside from St. Peter's in Vatican City, my favorite ever. And I know I haven't done it justice in this video, but um, it, it still overwhelms me the stories of the martyrs that are told here. And I wasn't going to do this, but I think I will. We'll go to one more spot before I call it a day on this video because I'm just so close and it, it, would, it would almost be a sin not to do this. Let's go. One of the things that's changed about the Pantheon since the last time I was here is that they're now charging five euros to get in. You can buy a ticket online, show the ticket at the uh, door, or you can do what I'm doing, just come to the office and pay cash. No credit card, cash. If at all possible, you wanna to come to the Pantheon early in the morning. I'm here about 9.30 and it's already pretty late. I think it opens at nine. During the COVID scare, you could only go around the outside of the Pantheon in one direction. But now they've got it open back up so that you can come in and just wander through at your leisure, whatever direction you want to go. Keep in mind that is an open space at the top of this. And when it rains, it falls right there. You can purchase uh, or rent some headphones to listen to everything around here. And if it's your first time here, I would highly recommend that you do that so that you know what you're looking at. Behind me here is the tomb of King Humbert and his wife. I have no idea who that is, but I do know that they guard it. So um, I guess it's important. This is the tomb of the painter Raphael. This is a continuing church here in Rome, so there are pews set up here. They do have mass here regularly. Behind me in this area is the tomb of Victor Emmanuel II, where we went to his uh, monument, the wedding cake building. This is the Chapel of the Annunciation.
And I should probably go back and point out when I was over on the other side here talking about the tomb of the painter and the sculptor Raphael. I just kind of glossed over that. <clears throat> but if you're ever in the Vatican Museums, there are what they call the Raphael Rooms, where they have all of these massive tapestries that were created by him. The man was a literal genius painter. Cannot be overstated. One of the main artists in all of Rome. All right, so I think that's going to be the end for today. And now I'm going to go get some coffee. But you've seen my favorite bakery in the whole world. You've seen my favorite church in the whole world. And you've seen the Pantheon. There's nothing like it in the whole world. We will see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow's travel day, so we'll be traveling to Florence tomorrow. Um, it'll be a fun day.